Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Serie A review. Yeah, I probably should have worn Roma by size since Roma is already in the thumbnail uh, and Sampdoria is second in the list of improved teams in the expected standings. Let's give this new beautiful Sampdoria jersey a first outing on the channel. It is absolutely stunning. <laughs> this shirt is absolutely stunning, so yeah. But we will not talk a whole lot about Sampdoria. Uh, as I said, they got a pretty big win over Venezia, uh, which basically relieves Sampdoria of most of the relegation trouble, but solidifies it for uh, Venezia. Now, uh, this weekend is about two themes. A, the uh, glorious win by Roma over Lazio. I mean, that was a first half that you just did not expect uh, from Roma uh, if you've watched them all over the season. And yeah, uh, <laughs> clipping the wings of the Eagles. Absolutely clipping the wings of the Eagles. Um, if you're a Roma fan, uh, this will be the most glorious two weeks, unless you're really uh, there for the Italian national team. Then <laughs> I think in Italy, the fear of failing to qualify. And when I say Italy, it also extends over to here to this room where I, I am nervous about these upcoming playoffs. I... Honestly, I don't really see Italy going through. But that's a different story. They will cover that a little bit later. But just for bragging rights in the city, I mean, this could not have been sweeter. But the other story is, of course, that uh, my favorite team, Milan, suddenly finds himself for the first time in this... Uh, is it the first time of the season? Maybe it's the second time, but uh, that late. They're at the moment the title favorites. Because Inter again dropped points. Yes, Napoli keep it up. But uh, Milan uh, are on a long, long, long unbeaten streak. Yes, it's not always pretty. Although I think they played well at Cagliari. And then we go to the third theme that actually is very much related to that Milan win. So Inter drop points to Fiorentina. Uh, there was, again, racist abuse on um, black players in Cagliari itself. Which... Definitely is the disgrace of the weekend, especially on a weekend where Serie A made it no to racism all over. And then you have these incidents happening again in Cagliari. And I actually, I have work called Cagliari, because I are from Cagliari, they're a huge Cagliari fan. So I do have um, some liking due to that team and I, you know, I talk, 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 talk to them, I, I, I can sympathize. Uh, with them. However, this element in the Cagliari fan base is just atrocious and it is damaging not only to the club of Cagliari and you can come out all as you want that we are not like a racist club. You may not be a racist club, but you have racist fans in there. You need to do something about that. And on the other side, I think uh, Serie A really has to come down hard for once. Yes, uh, collective punishment is not something that you want to have. I, I would agree with it. It's probably not even fair to many degrees. But at least those that have been making this change, and those were not few, they have to be banned for life from, any, from attending any game there. This is the only way that, that, that you can move forward. And I would coerce the club into uh, strict sanctions unless they co 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 and don't come up with... Uh, <laughs> this is... Um, uh, you know, we, we're not non fault. It's our fans. You have to take care of that as well. You absolutely have to take care of that as well. So yeah, uh, those are my few cents on that one. As I said, I watched a whole lot of Serie A this weekend because it worked out just fine, especially on Saturday with all the three title contenders playing after each other. And there was not really much competition from uh, the other leagues going on. Uh, potentially, I could have watched a little bit more Bundesliga, um, but I, I decided no. I want to see Napoli against Udine because Udine can be a rather nasty opponent and so they proved. Napoli had real trouble against Udine in the first half um, where uh, they took even, I was saying it was not even a, a, an undeserved lead. I made the rant already, a red jersey, again Napoli playing in a non-Napoli color at home and the fourth Maradona jersey, it's just enough but you know I made that rant already. But uh, Udine took a one lead, and I do love those black Udine jerseys. <laughs> you gotta see. Um, however, my hopes for Napoli dropping points, and you know, for me at this moment, 
my mind it is all about Milan winning that Scudetto because um, not only and I think I didn't mention this last last week I actually feel that Milan should have should have six more points in the table and they actually have all due to refereeing mistakes. I'm looking at the equalizer uh, by Kessie against Napoli at home where Giroud was lying in what is just a bit of cyber where he's lying he's not interfering with anything. That's two more points. Um, then the three points, of course, against Betsy. Although I'm almost willing to take these away because uh, the way the Milan players reacted to that. And then Udine's equalizer was also uh, clear. So uh, one point from now uh, from Nap- N- Napoli, three points from Spezia. And then Udine's equalizer was also a handball. So that's six points that Milan should have more in the table, in the, in the standings, if the refereeing was correct. And for that reason... For me, it's all about winning this Scudetto because I think there's a unique chance now for Milan. Uh, I actually have a feeling that while Milan is building a great team, that the way Juve are gearing up, I think next season will probably be Juve's to lose in many, many ways. And I think Inter will not be as weak again as well. So there is a real a unique opportunity for Milan at this very, very, very moment to actually take this title. Um, and so... While I would not be unhappy if Napoli wins this title, I would take Napoli over Inter and Juve any day of the week. My mindset is uniquely for Milan and so I want the title container to drop the points. Also to make up for these injustices that have been happening throughout the season. As I said, Milan should have six more points and if that would happen, Milan would already be clear through to win that title. In any case, uh, Napoli, as I said, in the first half, rather, rather sketchy. In the second half, they turned on. And in a very short period, Victor Osiman shows that he's probably the best striker in Serie A at this very moment. Um, and I would even go so far to say he's he's one of the most talented strikers. And he is only getting, getting better. This guy is amazing. He is probably the one Napoli player that truly has a winning mentality. Because that's the one thing that I do not trust Napoli to win games. Victor Seaman with him, two goals, all very well taken, turns turn, turn, turn around, gets vital three points for uh, Napoli and any hope for a comeback were then uh, dashed by a red card for Udine very late on. Fiorentina against Inter was another one... Uh, Inter does not look right at the moment. And this comes so so, so surprisingly because uh, not too long ago, Inter were flying and you thought it's inevitable that they will be the next champions. No, uh, Fiorentina outplayed them the entire first half and uh, Inter were flattered to not um, uh, to not fall fall back. Although I think they even had a goal taken to take, take off, fortunately for offside, because this would have been so un- undeserved. However, Fiorentina take the lead and right after the, the half and make it 1-0. But then Inter showed some um, resolve and actually I think Fiorentina started a little bit too soon to hang back. And I was thinking, you know how I like those yellow Fiorentina jerseys. And I said, if Fiorentina beat Inter, I probably will get this jersey. And then I think, you know, I've already so, I, I'm so much in the minus <laughs> <laughs> for my jersey acquisitions this uh, year, that yeah, uh, better than all. So Denzel Dumfries gets the equalizer. Uh, Fiorina hold out for at uh, they at least deserve the draw. I I I would say so. It was uh, kind of best inter dropping points. I don't have to buy the jersey, although at one point I definitely want to get this one because I really like this one and. To be, to, to, to be honest, I mean, uh, just imagine here, uh, you know, we are very is that there's a yellow. It will brighten things up back there a teeny little bit. But yeah, Inter, I don't know what's happening. I just uh, wait for explosion and maybe after the international break, Inter will come back again. But uh, I think ever since the derby, Inter have taken real hits. And yes, it didn't help that. And I mean, the league derby, the derby not the Cup Cup, cup Derby. Um... I have a feeling that, you know, the Champions League, Inter had a really, really, really tough schedule. That also has to be taken in in the current Fiorentina. It's not an easy, easy, easy point, but they just don't look right in many ways. Um, Milan, 
as I said, against small opponents, I'm also not trusting Milan a whole lot, but um, they played ac actually well, and I think they should have uh, won by a much bigger scoreline. And that's the one thing that bugs me a whole lot with Milan at the, at the moment. That um, yes, you uh, you you level with Na Napoli when it comes to a tiebreak, but Napoli have four more goals to the good, so you need to put goals past your opponent. And that's the one thing that so much annoys me is that Milan, yes, you win. Great. If you keep on winning, goal difference doesn't count. But I think you need to start putting in the goals as well. You need to de start destroying an, an opponent. And Kaleri did it at the beginning of, of the season. And Kaleri were right for the taking. And there were enough chances there that were either... And uh, the one thing, as good as Milan holding the midfield, I think the defense with Tomori and Kalulu completely surprisingly is rock solid at this moment. I don't see them messing it up uh, there. Um, Theo Hernandez, outstanding. I think he, he, he was playing this and more centrally, which was a bit of a surprise. But uh, for midfield, I don't have any problems. Maybe the right side with Messias or Salamakers is a little bit off. What I really have a problem with is uh, the attacking play up front. They just, in the last few, the, the last pass or the second to last pass is often not quite right. And very often great opportunities are squandered because of lack of build-up play or lack of finishing ability. That's the one thing that has me worried about Milan. Everything else looks really, really good. I have to say, they played really nice. They got a wonderful winner, winning goal by Ismail Benancer. Uh, what a great volley, but it's again, it's... Um, it was not a planned goal. It's similar to the winning goal they got last uh, week against um, Empoli. It's again kind of uh, accidental goal instead of an intended goal in many ways. So that's the one thing. I already talk, talked about the scenes after, afterwards where um, uh, Mike Menor got abused by the uh, fans and then they got the wood in the player said, don't direct, don't, don't direct. You said some, something off and you saw the big melee then at, at the end. I mean, it was not really fighting. You could see they were ar arguing. Uh, Ibrahim which took it upon him. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I remember when I told him about Ibrahim coming on, I think with five minutes to go or so, she said, I don't think he will score. I said, he doesn't need to score. The old man just needs to hold, hold, hold up the ball and uh, avoid Kaleri to score. I think Kaleri in the end, I mean, that, that, that's the one thing. Kaleri didn't show much danger. However, they hit once the crossbar. At very end, and this would be a typical Milan uh, result that um, you made, don't, don't make the end of the one goal and then you end, end up conceding. It went well, Milan up top. And with all the re other results going there, their way, they are now uh, three points ahead of Napoli. Six ahead of Inter. Inter still have the game against Bologna in hand, uh, which may still be awarded to, to them. I don't know how, how how this is going, but things are looking very positive for Inter in that. Uh, for Milan. Inter. Nah, Inter. <laughs> Get it out of my mouth. Very good for Milan at this moment. So, yeah, that's the situation up top. As I said, on um, then Juve... And this is a sneakily. You <laughs> get another win against Salernitana. I mean, that was expected. Uh, Dybala now not uh, uh, extending his car. Connor is probably the biggest news coming, coming out of you. But you were right in there. At the moment, one point behind Inter. Juve is still in the conversation. Yes, only a 3% chance. So I, I didn't talk chances at the moment. Uh, my model is 46%, Milan 31, Inter 20, Na Napoli 3, Juve. Juve is not out of it. And I think if the... If the other teams keep dropping points, you might as well, you might as well stumble into this title. And, and I think, um, was it since match day four or five, you have actually gotten the most points. Yep. Dangerous. Dang, dang, dang dangerous, you said. I said already on the bottom, a uh, big win for Sampdoria at Venezia. So, um, therefore, Venezia is now in trouble. I, I, I would say the current bottom three. Despite Genoa getting uh, a win over Tor Torino, another one of those results, Torino just about beat Inter, uh, and now um, they 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 lose uh, to Genoa, uh, first win in a long time for Genoa, second win, I said it, uh, but Genoa, Venezia, and Salzantana look very 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 much down. It is now um, Sampdoria and Spezia have twenty nine points, seemingly safe. We have Cagliari at twenty twenty five. 
And we have Genoa at 22 and Venezia 22, Salernitana. And Venezia have a game in hand, Salernitana actually have two games in hand. Still, it's a long, 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 long way to go at the bottom. And then I think the last big one is, of course, the Rome Derby. And Tammy Abraham completely taking it to Lazio. Uh, he scores the fastest goal ever scored in a Rome Derby after 50, uh, 56 seconds. And I actually was late. I actually finished another, another game. I was late. I see 1-0. And then I had to scroll back and really first minute and the way he's grabbing it came from the crossbar uh that was the private parts that scored that goal i'm pretty certain uh balls of steel i want to say the second goal brilliantly taken in between i think immobile had one half chance or so on but it was all roma and it was uh Mourinho kind of complaining yeah we had to play europa league on thursday and lazio can sit there and smoke a six this is great which sorry said at the moment i'm not smoking <laughs> Also funny. Um, but yeah, a car's cast of crop cross is a little bit behind Tammy Avery, but he acrobatically slams it in at 2 to 0 and then uh, uh, a picture perfect free kick from Lorenzo Pepe Pellegrini. And if you watch it, this is the perfectly placed free kick. This ball is out until it's in. And he only puts it in the only corner where Strakosha can get can, can get it. I mean he had that corner Strakosha had the corner perfectly covered. And you see the, the only place where he cannot get them. Here's the hand, here's the ball, here, and here's the stanchion. Unbelievable free kick. Then the second half then was a little bit uh, a letdown. Okay, it allowed me to actually uh, enter the results for my table. Uh, my my, my table and was not unhappy about that. But what a brilliant performance. And the smirk that Totti had on, on his face. <laughs> was really, 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 really fun. I uh, have, to, have to say the atmosphere at the Rome, Rome Derby, though not the best of the weekend, but I would give it the second best. Uh, the Roman Derby never ceases to amaze me in terms of atmosphere. Fortunately, there's also a lot of hatred between those two and some uh, violence very often uh, erupting, which is the neg negative part. But uh, for me, this is the most intense rivalry in uh, Italy, the uh, the Roman derby. And then uh, Atalanta winning at Bologna, you know, not much to talk, to talk about except that um, uh, the Cissé winner in the 82nd minute. Cissé was a ref played for a refugee team not too long ago and was scouted by Atalanta. So a uh, nice story there for Atalanta winning that one at Bologna and keeping themselves in the race for the Champions League, although... They are ways back. I mean, at the moment, it's eight points behind you where they have a game in hand. Uh, it will be a tough ask uh, for Atalanta to make it back into the Champions League. Now, uh, the interesting part is, and I think this this game could very well uh, be a pre-decider in the title race. Right when you come back from the inter in the international review with the Derby d'Italia, Juve against Inter. Uh, that is a game that could knock Inter more as completely out of the title race and um, you know the small chance that Juve have would act, act, actually increase with that. Atalanta have to play Napoli, another one, that, that could be a very decisive one where Milan has a seemingly cushion. This is always dangerous for Milan, I absolutely hate it. <laughs> it's all, all, all also the last game, Milan have a seemingly cushy game on the 4th of April at home to Bologna. And as much trouble as Bologna gave them in the first game, but even nine-man Bologna was really hard to get down, uh, will be will be tough. In any case, so that was uh, my thoughts from CSRA from the past weekend. Uh, please let me know yours. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!